the Son, who is the Spirit, blessed three in one. Holy, 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 holy Lord God Almighty, and we lift our hearts before you as a token of our love. Holy, 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 gracious Father, gracious Father, we're so blessed to be your children, gracious Father, and we lift our hearts before you as a token of our love, gracious Father, gracious Father. Precious Jesus, precious Jesus, we're so glad that you've redeemed us, precious Jesus. And we lift our hearts before you as a token of our love, precious Jesus, precious Jesus. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, and we lift our hearts before you as a token of our love. Alleluia, Alleluia. Good morning. Glad to have you with us this morning. I'm back outside on a nice rainy morning. Enjoy the sounds of the rain falling and refreshing the earth as I continue to read from Job. Picking up in Job chapter 8 verse 1 with Bildad's first response to Job. Then Bildad the Shuhite replied to Job, How long will you go on like this? Your words are like a blustering wind. Does God twist justice? Does the Almighty twist what is right? Your children obviously sinned against him, so their punishment was well deserved. But if you pray to God and seek the favor of the Almighty, if you are pure and live with complete integrity, he will rise up and restore your happy home. And though you started with little, you will end with much. Just ask the former generation. Pay attention to the experience of our ancestors. For we were born but yesterday and know so little. Our days on earth are as transient as a shadow. But those who came before us will teach you. They will teach you from the wisdom of former generations. Can papyrus reeds grow where there is no marsh? Can bulrushes flourish where there is no water? While they are still flowering, not ready to be cut, they begin to wither. Such is the fate of all who forget God. The hope of the godless comes to nothing. Everything they count on will collapse. They are leaning on a spider web. They cling to their home for security, but it won't last. They try to hold it fast, but it will not endure. The godless seems so strong, like a lush plant growing in the sunshine. It branches spreading across the garden. Its roots grow down through a pile of rocks to hold it firm. But when it is uprooted, it isn't even missed. That is the end of its life and others spring up from the earth to replace it. But look, God will not reject a person of integrity, nor will he make evil evildoers prosper. Yet will he will yet fill your mouth with laughter and your lips with shouts of joy. Those who hate you will be clothed with shame, and the tent of the wicked will be destroyed. Job's third speech, his response to Bildad, beginning in Job 9, verse 1. Then Job spoke again, Yes, I know this is all true in principle, but how can a person be declared innocent in the eyes of God? If someone wanted to take God to court, would it be possible to answer him even once in a thousand times? For God is so wise and so mighty, who has ever challenged him successfully? Without warning, he moves the mountains, overturning them in his anger. He shakes the earth from its place, and its foundations tremble. If he commands it, the sun won't rise and the stars won't shine. He alone has spread out the heavens 
and marches on the waves of the sea. He made all the stars, the bear, Orion, the Pleiades, and the constellations of the southern sky. His great works are too marvelous to understand. He performs miracles without number. Yet when he comes near, I cannot see him. When he moves on, I do not see him go. If he sends death to snatch someone away, who can stop him? Who dares to ask him, what are you doing? And God does not restrain his anger. The mightiest forces against him are crushed beneath his feet. And who am I that I should try to answer God or even reason with him? Even if I were innocent, I would have no defense. I could only plead for mercy. And even if I summoned him and he responded, he would never listen to me. For he attacks me without reason. And he multiplies my wounds without cause. He will not let me catch my breath but fills me instead with bitter sorrows. As for strength, he has it. As for justice, who can challenge him? Though I am innocent, my own mouth would pronounce me guilty. Though I am blameless, it would prove me wicked. I am innocent, but it makes no difference to me. I despise my life. Innocent or wicked, it is all the same to him. That is why I say he destroys both the blameless and the wicked. He laughs when a plague suddenly kills the innocent. The whole earth is in, his hand, in the hands of the wicked, and God blinds the eyes of the judges and lets them be unfair. If not he, then who? My life passes more swiftly than a runner. It flees away, filled with tragedy. It disappears like a swift boat, like an eagle that swoops down on its prey. If I decided to forget my complaints, if I decided to end my sadness and be cheerful, I would dread all the pain he would send. For I know you will not hold me innocent, O oh God. Whatever happens, I will be found guilty. So that's the use. Of, so what's the use of trying? Even if I were to wash myself with soap and cleanse my hands with lye to make them absolutely clean, you would plunge me into a muddy ditch, and I would be so filthy mild clothing would hate me. God is not a mortal like me. So I cannot argue with him or take him to trial. If only there were a mediator who could bring us together. But there is none. The mediator could make God stop beating me, and I would no longer live in terror of his punishment. Then I could speak to him without fear. But I cannot do that in my own strength. Job frames his plea to God, beginning in Job 10 verse 1. I am disgusted with my life. Let me complain freely. I will speak in the bitterness of my soul. I will say to God, Don't simply condemn me. Tell me the charge you are bringing against me. What do you gain by oppressing me? Why do you reject me? The work of your own hands, while sending joy and prosperity to the wicked. Are your eyes only for those, those of a human? Do you see things as people see them? Is your lifetime merely human? Is your life so short that you are in a hurry to probe for my guilt, to search for my sin? Although you know I am not guilty, no one can rescue me from your power. You formed me with your hands. You made me, and yet you completely destroy me. Remember that I am made of dust. You Will you turn me back to dust so soon? You guided my conception and formed me in the womb. You clothed me with skin and flesh and you knit my bones and sinews together. You gave me life and showed me your unfailing love. My life was preserved by your care. Yet your real motive, I know this was your intent, was to watch me. And if I sin, you would not forgive my iniquity. If I am guilty, too bad for me. And even if I'm innocent, I am filled with shame and misery so that I can't hold my head high. And if I hold my head high, you hunt me like a lion and display your awesome power against me. Again and again, you witness against me. You pour out an ever-increasing volume of anger upon me and bring fresh armies against me. Why then did you bring me out of my mother's womb? Why didn't you let me die at birth? Then I would have been spared this miserable existence. I would have gone directly from the womb to the grave. I have only a little time left, so leave me alone. 
that I may have a little moment of comfort before I leave for the land of darkness and utter gloom, never to return. It is a land as dark as midnight, a land of utter gloom, for confusion reigns, and the light is as dark as midnight. Zophar's first response to Job, beginning in Job 11, 1. Then Zophar the Namathite replied to Job, Shouldn't someone answer this torrent of words? Is a person proved innocent just by talking a lot? Should I remain silent while you babble on? When you mock God, shouldn't someone make you ashamed? You claim, my teaching is pure, and I am clean in the sight of God. If only God would speak, if only he would tell you what he thinks, if only he would tell you the secrets of wisdom, for true wisdom is not a simple matter. Listen, God is doubtless punishing you far less than you deserve. Can you solve the mysteries of God? Can you discover everything there is to know about the Almighty? Such knowledge is higher than the heavens. But who are you? It is deeper than the underworld. What can you know in comparison to him? It is broader than the earth and wider than the sea. If God comes along and puts a person in prison, or if he calls the court to order, who is going to stop him? For he knows those who are false, and he takes note of all their sins. An empty-headed person won't become wise any more than a wild donkey can bear human offspring. If only you would prepare your heart and lift up your hands to him in prayer. Get rid of your sins and leave all iniquity behind you. Then your face will brighten in innocence. You'll be strong and free of fear. You will forget your misery. It will all be gone like water under the bridge. Your life will be brighter than the noonday. Any darkness will be as bright as morning. You will have courage because you will have hope. You'll be protected and will rest in safety. You will lie down unafraid, and many will look to you for help. But the wicked will lose hope. They have no escape. Their hope becomes despair. What friends he has, right? <laughs> Bless his heart. All right, so um, our next hymn is Awesome God. It's one thing we hear over and over in Job and his friends testifying about how awesome and powerful God is. Take a deep breath and sing along with me. God is an awesome God he awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. All right. Let's see. So, I think one thing we can definitely take from the lesson of Job's is when people are going through terrible trials, um, sometimes we're quick to assume that they did something to deserve it. And what we can see in Job is sometimes bad things just happen so um do not be so quick to speak if god has not revealed something to us all righty um let's say good morning to everybody who joins us by uh email and text good morning shirley good morning jim and peggy good morning uh patty good morning who am i forgetting um good morning mom good morning troy good morning ann and katie and kara Good morning, Beth and Winston and Sophie. And let's see who else on here this morning. Good morning, John. Good morning, Rhonda. Good morning, Pam. 
<laughs> yeah, it's low though. It is beautiful though. Good morning, Karen. Oh, and good morning, Janie. Usually Janie's on here and she just for some reason it hides her. So anyway, hope everybody has a wonderful day and I will see you back tomorrow morning at 8.